the Jim Jeffries Show podcast. I'm Jim Jeffries. Uh, please subscribe to Rate the Podcast and come and see me on tour. Uh, October 27th in Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun. Uh, two performances. October 28th at the West Hampton Beach Performing Arts Centre. That's a real place. Um, November 10th and 11th, I'll be at Toronto at the Sony Centre for Performing Arts. Also, my UK tour sold out so quickly, and everyone's complaining about the ticket price, but it sold out quickly, so it feels like I priced them about right. <laughs> um, there'll be extra That's shows. The invisible hand of the market. There'll be a- extra shows in London and an extra show in Manchester. And Forrest Shaw, you're going to be coming with me. Yes, I will. You know, people... Um I'm excited about that too. I'm very excited. Uh, people complain about the ticket prices though a lot of times that are on the secondary market. Yeah, what like, they do is they fault, go two hundred pounds for a ticket. You're a piece of shit. And then I go, <laughs> just ring the theatre directly. You fucking cunt yeah. who can't Google yeah. properly. Yeah. Exactly. Like you've taken the first offer. Like that seems a bit extreme. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy on Craigslist. I'm like, yeah. Um, <laughs> in saying that, at this moment while you're listening to the podcast, as soon as we leave the podcast, me and Forrest are going to see the Dodgers play in the World Series. Uh, we released yep. the podcast tomorrow, so it wasn't it a great win? Oh, my God, Kershaw. No hitter. Yeah, I wouldn't believe it. I didn't it. see it. I was here working. Uh, I, watching Altuve just break <laughs> his Achilles as he ran to first was one of the joyous things I've ever seen yeah. in my entire life. That streaker. Now, so we did an episode today. Oh, introduce everyone. Oh, you want me to introduce Yeah, him? you do it. You okay, do it. all right. Uh, are, are you on the show too today? Jack's, right, Jack's, Jack's back. Well, our, impor- our important <laughs> guest today. We, we had we had two guests we wanted <laughs> yeah. to be on the show that have already left. But, our so important guest. <laughs> our important guest today is the head writer of the Jim Jeffrey Show, Jason Reich. Hello. I just messed. I just bought Jason Reich. I like to call usually him. people like mess up my last name, it. but you messed up my first yeah. name. I like to call him Jason Third Reich. It's good. Mm. No, it's, it's not good. a good joke. Well, if the, you know how it's spelled, that is a better joke because it's kind of because it looks like yeah. Third Reich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His middle name That's is That's a third. good podcast joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More visual than anything. Yeah. And uh, there's another person sitting over here. Old He's man Hackett. He, yep, Hackett's back here on the show again. He's always sitting over there looming. <laughs> Hackett, Hackett comes into my office every day with some bit of information, and he's just this fucking doom and gloom cunt. He just walks in. <laughs> And it's like, it's like people need their clothes back. Because you won't believe this, but these aren't my clothes that I wear on the show. Mm. Mm. And, but I steal a lot of them. I, Your suit t- I, really I have liked more the- suits than I've ever had in my entire life. This episode's I had two. Uh, wardrobe was very nice. I liked it had a today. print on it. Maybe that it. was the problem with the episode, but it had a print on it. <laughs> um, a and problem. I, that was a great episode. Yeah. It was a great episode, but if you at the live recording, I fumbled a few words. I don't know why, but I, was, uh, I had peanut butter in my mouth is what I call it. I've never had that doing stand-up, and I... I've never had it doing a late night show, but I am doing Fallon on Thursday, so who knows? <laughs> it may be coming. <laughs> he'll help you out, though, Fallon. Yeah, he'll tussle my hair or we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll crush eggs Laugh. into each other's heads. Yeah, do some uh, yeah. some. And I hear karaoke. he's a drinker. I hear he's a drinker. I'm going to go out with him, get on the tear, oh, break still? his finger. I, thought I don't he... know. He looks like a drinker. I thought he... Well, I thought he yeah. cut back a little bit because he had like heard it, he fell down or something. He fell. He had a, his wedding ring on. Yeah, and that broke. He almost tore his finger off or something, and now he has like a cast on his finger. Mm. Which I'll tell you a story right now, a little oh. story that you might not know. God, this is a good podcast. Yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> okay, so what happened was I was performing in Sydney about three years ago, and Tim Farris. Now, does anyone know who Tim Farris is? You no. told us in the writer's room oh, the other okay. day, well, I forgot. You can fuck off then. Okay, so <laughs> well, Tim, I already forgot. So Tim, Farris, Farris. Tim Farris is part of the Farris brothers who were the founding members of In Excess. Uh, okay. Yeah, what was the was, other guy's there, name? There was Kurt Pengelly. I uh, know. No. He was the guy who played saxophone. Yeah. Kurt Pengelly. <laughs> yeah. Right? And the other guy was called um, Magic Johnson. Michael Hutchins. Michael Hutchins. <laughs> Michael Hutchins. Yeah, yeah. So Michael Hutchins was the lead singer. And it was a funny thing because at my school... Um, we had a rival school that was you know, you know, over the other side of the suburb. And their big thing was, we was like, oh, I hate kids from that school. And they were like, we had in excess. And then we'd be like, oh, that's pretty good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you guys know how big they were in the world when during you were in Australia? Ki- during, they were like the, during the Kick yeah. album, yeah, there wasn't kick. a bigger band in the world. Yeah. No, but did, you guys know that, did you guys know that? Because that I means it's a different era, like as far as... Knowing what's going on in other countries, because that album was 
Every song it felt like was a hit on that album. Yeah, everything was a single. Yeah. We always get I in heard... trouble on this podcast when we sing songs, by the way. So just you know, just don't start it. Just know that all that song. <laughs> as soon yeah. as we start singing, uh, need you, you know. tonight. Yeah, need you tonight. Suicide Blonde. Suicide. No, that, that was another album. That was the next oh. album, right? Listen like thieves. Never tear no, us oh, apart. That was from the Listen like Never thieves. Tear, <laughs> listen like thieves. Never tear us apart. New sensation. New sensation. Right. Other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I should be looking it up right now. Every but, uh, every song was a hit. <laughs> Kick was a song. Yeah, what well, was that right? other one? Yeah, yeah there was one now, forgetting. There's Kick a wasn't a hit one. though. Here I got it right here. Uh, Guns in the Sky. It Devil had a, Inside. It had a great Devil, album. Devil Inside. It had a great Inside album big. cover because uh, skate, Need You Tonight. Skateboarding was at its height. Like, okay, hold on. It was just like a skateboard going over the top of Michael Hutchins' head. Here, here, wait. Here's all the hits. There's a lot of okay. New Sensation. Mm-hmm. Devil Inside. Need You Tonight. And mediate, which was that. Oh know, yeah, that like was the like, Bob yeah. Dylan. Thing, uh, yeah. uh, Never tear us apart. Mystify, and uh, wildlife was that? I think it, the Killers do a very yeah, good yeah. cover of. But that's Jesus almost that's. There's only like three songs left song. on the album that yeah. like aren't weren't hits. So, that's, yeah. so if if you're a young listener, and you don't know um, who In Excess were. They had a lead singer who um, put a belt around his neck and hung it to a door and masturbated himself to death. They say it's a suicide, so I'm going to say it was erotic asphyxiation. Anyway, so I That's met Jim Jeffries, uh, detective work. CSI, right? uh... CSI Jim <laughs> yeah. Jeffries. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I met I met Tim Ferriss, who's the guitarist. Dun, 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 dun. Don't do that. that Don't do that. No, I mean, it, that was such a bad rendition of it. There's absolutely no way that they're going to. So get... anyway, he came to my show and he came backstage and he had a a, a, a finger that was all plastered up. And I said, what happened to your finger? And he goes, I was on my boat and a rope wrapped around my finger and it tore my finger off and they stitched it back on. I said, whoa, that's terrible. And he goes, it's the end of In Excess. That's my chord hand. I can't play guitar anymore. And so I said, so your finger is more important than Michael Hutchins. He didn't get a big laugh. But <laughs> in, in... Yeah, <laughs> They've been through two extra singers yeah. since then. Anyway, I didn't think this podcast would go down that route. Um, what route? Death? Right at the beginning, I mean? Well, in excess. Oh, yeah. Well, you're Australian, I didn't think in excess so. would be a big topic. Next week, Midnight Oil. Uh, before we start uh, into the <laughs> act of stuff, I always like to go over the, the title sequence. Those are mm-hmm. the things that we change each week. This week. Wait, these are all new from this week? No. Half, half baseball, half earth. Why is that? Because the World Cup, the World Series. Jesus World Cup. Christ, World Cup. <laughs> the World Series. So there's Four a baseball. Nine. You know that thing you're about to go to yeah. tonight? <laughs> and the world. <laughs> And Melania duplicating into many Melanias, which... That I'm, was... I like that one. I'm pretty sure there's only one Melania, but it does really look... Yeah, that, so uh, yeah. Uh, people who may not know, there was a conspiracy theory floating around that there are M- Melania clones, yeah. that she has a whole bunch of body doubles. And that's why Trump is always saying, Melania happens to be right here. She's yeah. standing right here. But the one uh, from the clip oh, we showed... I think is looking good, man. For all the stress she's having. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you think she would have gone downhill real fast, man, but I think she's looking good. I'm all for yeah. her, yeah. yeah, no. I'm looking forward to the divorce and what celebrity she's going to marry next. Mm. Who's the Jackie Onassis, the Onassis? <laughs> Who's the Onassis in her life? I don't know. Who's she going to marry next? I don't know. We, I think we talked about right. that. I think, us, I think you your... and McGregor. You yeah. and McGregor. He just got divorced this week. <laughs> Why you and McGregor? Because he got divorced this week. He's got like, that's not that's not like her type. She's gonna be like he's like an actor. She's, yes, an she's actor. a little too old for you. She's McGregor. gonna get so much yeah. money in the divorce. All right, I'm gonna throw my hat in the ring. Me, I think you have a shot. Yeah, I, I mean, mean she's been with a non-drinker for long enough. You've been to her hometown. You've got stuff to talk about. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. Totally. I've seen the house where she grew up. Yeah, mm-hmm. you've eaten it's, the pastries. It's a humble, very intimate. Yeah. It's a humble but nice house. You could just when you meet her for the first time, you could throw in just casual conversation, like something that you remember. And so you yeah. live on a street, <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, in Slovenia. Uh, Someone Google that. You're for from Slovakia, the, right? Those pastries at the I went, coffee shop. Melania, I went to your castle. <laughs> I did. I went to the castle where they overlooked the whole town of uh, Sivaniska. Sivaniska. Who knows? That was 14 episodes ago. That's why Jack is on that I I went there. I went there. And then uh, there was also in the title sequence, um, Trump was on half a golf cart and then half a tank. Because he's going to kill us all. Oh, that's cryptic. Why is that? that, Jackson? I just thought it looked cool. Ah, Okay. Oh, you picked that one. Uh, I didn't pitch it, but I thought it looked, I liked the way it looked. 
Yeah. That's and then idea. one more, there was money and it had O'Reilly's face on it, I guess, right? Is that because money? Because uh, O'Reilly donated, not donated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He didn't pay someone money. off 32 million. Is that the amount? That was the Ooh. amount of the settlement before. That's a lot of sexual harassment for 32 million. That's not light sexual harassment. Yeah. Yeah. Like thirty two thousand <laughs> is a reasonable amount yeah, for yeah. a little like an ass slap we, or calling we, someone toots is thirty two thousand. Can we talk about this? That today he said he's mad at God uh, for I don't know. everything I didn't that's that. happened to him. That for the sexual harassment? Well, for just what he's going through. He's yeah, mad at God because God <laughs> gave it. him God gave him three uh, free will and an erection. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's to blame, I it really, is God, and he yeah. hasn't paid mm-hmm. into the settlement. Yeah, that is true. All the money that he gets all the time, God, he could give a little bit back. To but a how the like fuck? This. I didn't know O'Reilly would even be worth thirty-two million in total. That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, like Definitely. like if I sexually harass you, you're getting um, or maybe three thousand. <laughs> Three thousand. That's what you. That's what I have to pay for sex, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got. A, I got a lot of money squirreled away in uh, foreign harassment accounts. Um, so the first act was what was the first act? Opioids. Opioids. Yes. Opioids. Fentanyl. The epidemic. Um, I, I found out today that it's very hard for me to say uh, opioids over and over. Um, uh, so fentanyl is. You can explain it. A drug. Uh, it is a synthetic type of heroin uh, or analog to heroin and it's very it's much more powerful than heroin so it's I kind of feel like heroin is like the chipotle of drug ingredients though do you remember when we didn't have chipotle in ingredients now it's like chipotle chicken chipotle oh, the actual shit. the ingredients pepper, not, 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 the not, chain. not the right, chain okay. and now have some chipotle mayonnaise it's Everything, like that yeah is it is fentanyl heroin or is it just a heroin like thing it's, it's. I think it's chemically similar. Yeah, I actually should know this. Considering it is. Just it's whole it's chemically out. similar, and it's. But it's. It was. You know. It's for people that need opioids. It's right. to, to be able it's to. It's like for you yeah, can't. You can't give a cancer, cancer patient treatment. that's in pain shoot them up with heroin. So you have to make something that's a cleaner version of like. It's like it's it's a painkiller basically. But it's, it's a very really yeah very powerful medical grade yeah uh, painkiller. And and so how but, many people in America are taking fentanyl? That should be taking it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the numbers are, but most cancer patients is they're prescribed that, and they can be prescribed in a patch form. Sometimes they have it IVs as well, and sometimes when you go into surgery and you're not a cancer, you just you're going to some sort of surgery, like you, like some sort of orthopedic surgery. Yeah. They might put it, you know, give you. And an that idea is the, that would so be the, the best that... patch to give up cigarettes ever. So the ad, if you watch the show, that what we showed in, in the uh, during the show that that advertisement for the drug was that's meant for yeah. you know cancer patients or people that need it but sure. it's you know this sort of weirdly uh, instructive <laughs> video one, about, one of my oh, favorite spraying it in the mouth yeah. one yeah. of my favorite jokes of the whole episode was that we actually showed how to buy it illegally yeah as a cautionary tale yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you do it you get it from asia yeah just uh, email them you have to get bitcoins bitcoin yeah, that's the that. reporters in that clip too were really they were like Oh shit, we did it! Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had no idea how fast it was gonna happen. Yeah, but wouldn't it get, wouldn't it get like noticed in the post? Aren't dog? Do dogs sniff our post? It dep- uh, they do, but they can't sniff at all. There's so much. Because so why are people trafficking tra- trafficking drugs if we can just uh, send them by post? Because if something's coming from China, there's not like most of the illegal drugs. You know, if the packages are coming from like South America or somewhere that like cocaine or you know marijuana or something's being trafficked versus china i don't think there's a lot of illegal drugs being trafficked there here, so maybe, here we go here's a question. i don't know it's also i don't know maybe it's somehow like oh this is meant for yeah pharmaceutical supply or something like that where it's because people know. need i mean people yeah. use it legally a lot sure. of people use it legally now you have no <laughs> idea how cheap drugs in america are i don't either but um how much do you think a gram of cocaine costs in australia <clears throat> i might know this <laughs> uh, I've been told uh, uh, yeah. three hundred and fifty dollars. Now, a gram, of co- a gram of cocaine in America, fifty bucks. Yeah. Well, because you know, I'm just saying you have it good in this country because we're closer to South America. It's easier to get stuff in here. This is where it all comes from. That's the thing is, why don't we just post it to Australia? Because it's an island. It's easier. That's the same. It's it's a more controllable place. Because there's dog sniffing it. It all comes back. There's yeah, dog sniffing you your post. It's a far trip for cocaine to go, yeah. just from like where cocaine's like produced. Well, anyway, we talked about fentanyl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Forrest got on a tangent there. 
Um, so bet. we talked about that and all the problems. They're going to be the on. drug czar. I'm going to be a drug czar now. You can't tell me that there isn't Russian influence in our government <laughs> when when we call it a drug czar. Oh, the, the czars have been around for a long it, time. It, it is weird, though. Right what, what other positions are there czars? Are There's there? actually, I looked this up, and there mm. are, like, Dozens and dozens of them. That there's, it's a kind of an informal, it's not an official title, but yeah. there's a lot of is there funny the, is there little czars. Healthcare czar. There's all kinds of an education czar. czar. You name it, there's a czar for it. It's a weird. Really? Yeah. Secretary is already a weird word. When you say Secretary of Defense, you're like, all right, but yeah. uh, I want to be a Secretary. But there's of like czars. a list, uh, uh, like everything. It's on Wikipedia. There's a list of all the. But here, czars. so when you look up the definition of czar, number one, an emperor of Russia before 1917. Mm-hmm. Number two, a person appointed by the government to advise on or coordinate policy in a particular area it's like why and did we choose anything. czar though yeah. yeah number three is the most effective word that i can use on game um on words with friends czar yeah that's good i never get to use a z yeah it's, it's either zoo pizza or czar oh, i could do a bit of pizza, pizza. You, never get, you never get two z's yeah is there only one in words with friends there's, probably, there's only one in scrabble. there's only one z in, in words with friends yeah it's the same as scrabble yeah yes, but you have right. that multiple letter um thing the the blank one where you can use anything so i could this should I be could, words with friends. yeah but you don't get points podcast. for that you just do people yeah. still play words with friends i think so I do. a few you do oh, right. my, my assistant nicole just yelled out that she does are we not friends <laughs> We're not friends. You never asked me to play words, words with friends. Words with my boss. Oh wait, here's a list of <laughs> list of U.S. czars. Wait, but what the? No, those are presidents. Oh, foreign aid czar. Yeah. There's an aid. There's an aid czar. There's an aid czar. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of aid czars. There's apparently um, Asian carp czar. Asian carp. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I noticed that one. Yeah, that's because a good one. Asian carps are an exotic invasive species that. Oh, are, the fish. Yeah, yeah. That are that they've bad they, eating. It's not that they're bad eating; it's that they've come over and they basically uh, outcompeted the the animals that were supposed to live in the habitats and lakes. That's and stuff, because they do a lot of after school stuff. Because they're Asian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh-huh. There's yeah. the, the there's, what did they win at violin playing? What are they doing? Um, no, something, they're just, something. Leave their blinkers on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The auto czar and the auto recovery czar, uh, bank bailout czar, boot, bird flu czar. If the auto czar was any good, we yeah. wouldn't need the auto recovery <laughs> yeah, exactly. czar. Exactly. Do you, would you say budget czar? There's a lot of czars. I, I didn't know there was this many you're czars. Just up to the bees <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. What would you say if you're a czar? Do you do you say that in your name? I, I'm the drug. Like czar. if you're doctor, you, you, you of go. Of course, I'm you're right. Doctor Jim <laughs> Jeffries. <laughs> yes, the czar said today. I would, yeah, I'm, I'm not go, even I'm a czar, and I want to say czar. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think. So, like, the drug czar is officially the director of drug control policy or something like that. Yeah. Like, he has an official title. Yeah. So, I, I don't know what all the – if the Asian carps are. But he, that, because it, because it, it, it's a, it is a big problem biologically. So, yeah. it's I guess they, they appointed one person to deal with that problem. Is that a full-time job or does he take care of other fish? Um, the Asian carps are – let me go back there real quick. <laughs> Cl- the click Asian, on it. Asian carps it's also are, the pot- <laughs> uh, is John Gross, and it's from 2010 to the present. Uh, he was wow. appointed by Barack Obama. Do I get to vote for him? And uh, no, he's just he's an appointee. But so Barack Obama appointed. I'm surprised that uh, I'm surprised that Trump. Didn't you want to drain, drain the, swamp, the swamp? Get rid of the that one. Yeah, exactly. The Asian carp czars. Seriously. <laughs> um, there's a war czar, a weapon czar, a weatherization czar. That sounds. That is very science fiction. That, yeah, that's it's the program manager, officer, office of weatherization and ever. Intergovernmental pro that does sound like a conspiracy theory right there. That's, Cobra that's Commander. Is there a guitar czar? That would be hard to say. No, there's a terrorism czar and a shipping czar, a science czar, rubber czar. He's a rubber director. <laughs> rubber czar. Okay, there was I know there's no longer rubber czar, but from 1942 to 1943, Franklin Roosevelt made. A, some a, a rubber director and called him the rubber czar <laughs> for one year. <laughs> like, that rubber. was a great year in that guy's life. You can fuck that guy whenever you want. You're not going to get an STD. Yeah, just for the rubber czar. He's going to show up. Uh, Which leads us to Jack. How's your sex life going? Still bad. Still bad. It's only been a week. So from, like- from the last podcast, you can get any heat. Hey, I got some followers on Twitter. So that's yeah. A plus. Follow Jack women? on Twitter. Women or men? Both. Hey, have no. you have you hit these women up? I know it's hard. Have now. you slid into their DMs, as I understand the kids were saying? Yeah. Have you done <laughs> that, that one thing? person we just talked about salad? Mm. Yeah, man. Did she ask you to toss her salad? That's a euphemism. Mm-hmm. No. No. Jack did a set last night. At- <laughs> 
<laughs> at Flappers. He did some stand-up comedy at he Flappers did some with, all, with we all, had the writers all the writers. And me. The Jim yeah. Jeffrey Show did a show at Flappers. I was at home rehearsing unsuccessfully. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and Jack, how did the set go? It went really well. He did good. I yeah, wrote him a joke. I, was good. I wrote him a joke that afternoon. Oh, well, what did he? Did you do he, it? He came yeah. and gave me a joke and I fixed it. I didn't Which write one was it. it? I didn't write it. Was it was the from... Chinese girl joke. I came in late. I didn't see that. Oh, okay. Do it again. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Do the joke. Oh, shit. All right. Here we go. What do you think? You're just going to sit here like a lump on a log? You got to do some shit? <laughs> That's kind of what I was hoping yeah. for. A lump on a log. Is that a term? Yeah, yeah. it is. I, I like it. It's an is old that a shit on yeah. a log or yeah, just a like, lump on a log? I, I learned it as a bump. Yeah, a bump on a log. My uh, mom used to say that. I always said lump on a log. Lump on a log. Yeah, alliteration. Mm. There you go. Do the joke. You're not All getting right, out of it. It better be funnier than lump on a log. So I'm from Atlanta. And Boo! Not yeah. carrying. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> You've ever been to Atlanta? Fuck Atlanta! <laughs> Atlanta's only got two things going for it. One of the things is the airport. And it's the busiest airport in the world, and it's also uh, the airport with the highest amount of human trafficking, which is actually how I got into the country. I used to be a Chinese girl. Now look at me. That's pretty good. Uh, good job. So you yeah. don't need the now look at me, but I, I fixed that joke. It was something else. It was just like, the original joke was just like, um, it's, it's the biggest airport with human trafficking, and then he just stopped talking. <laughs> it was weird. He that just like it. he just got everyone really depressed. <laughs> yeah. Just giving out facts. <laughs> he talked about human trafficking and then just looked sad. I like to now look at me though. Yeah. I think that's a good tag. Um, I hate the airport in Atlanta. I hate it. It's not good. It's like really. It's busy. got a fucking train in it. I don't want to get off a plane and onto a train. Yeah. I want to get off on a plane and into a car. I don't want to go plane, train, car. But that's Vegas. Every time you go to Vegas, you yeah. Go. I, I never yeah, said that was a good one either. No, What's the best terrible. airport? Best airport. Oh, is... yeah. There's one in like um, it's like Des Moines or oh my, it's like it's like right next to the, like the whole uh, terminal is just this parallel to the road. So you each uh, there's a lot you of good only walk ones. like I'll... ten feet off the plane and you're <laughs> on the road. I don't know what it I'll is. I'll tell you what I don't like is Denver because it's so far away from anything. They just built Very it out in the middle away. of nowhere. And there's this conspiracy theory that the bunkers for the apocalypse are underneath Denver Airport. I've seen that. For like video. the presidents uh -huh. and all that. And apparently, like yeah, because that's where real estate around it. And yeah, there's shit Denver. going on in Denver. Shit going on in Denver. Shit Damn. going on in Denver. So anyway, we talked about fentanyl. People are dying. Very sad. Very sad. Uh, the next thing <clears> we talked <throat> about was drinking in fraternities. Um, I don't like fraternities. I think it's stupid. I think. Greek life or having brothership or having special handshakes or something is stupid. But Jason was in a fraternity. I was. I wondered if you were going to remember that when we were talking he, um, about You look like someone who's been hazed your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> That's my just natural demeanor, yeah. Not just college. It's been yeah. a constant. What fraternity were you in? Uh, I was in Alpha Epsilon Pi. That sounds All hard to say. the yeah. nice Jewish boys from Long Island. Oh. That's what it was. Okay. You're uh, in a Jutonary. Is that Jeter? Mm, no, it wouldn't connect that together. Jewish needs work. How would you say Jewish fraternity? Just Jewish Probably frat. just like that. Yeah. Okay. It was, <laughs> was, was, it's you, like a nationally Jewish fraternity. Did you only accept Jews? Could I have gotten in? No, no. Uh, but but it's. I think it's nationally recognized as, as primarily Jewish fraternity. Right, okay. Couple. And what, yeah. what did the Jewish fraternity do different from regular fraternities? Uh, not much. I mean, it was just like if you but were Jewish, there, that was one of the places you went to check out. You know, when you were was there a the female Jewish fraternity like the like in Revenge of the Nerds? Where it was just... right. I don't know if there was a nationally. There must be nationally Jewish sorority. I don't know. If but was the hazing bad? See, I mean, a no, and b. Uh, yeah. I mean, to give you an example of what I had to endure, I missed. I would say eighty percent of all the pledging stuff because I was rehearsing for a play. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just like, sorry guys, I got rehearsal. I can't do whatever stupid thing is happening tonight. So, But I don't think that's a normal yeah. fraternity. Right? They, they like, have one painful thing to do, but it doesn't matter. It's cutting the end of your dick off. Uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't. But I plan. I think you that. do that when you're I planned for that yeah. 18 years before. <laughs> I'm, I'm circumcised as well. Did you know that about me? Yeah. I'm a circumcised I person. I did know that. How did Everyone you know in that? Australia was circumcised in the 70s because of sand and heat and wind. Something, <laughs> something to do with the sand. elements. <laughs> so many people were getting sand on their dick. Like, yeah, we hadn't like, invented yeah, underwear yeah. yet. You didn't want a sand caught up there. It was too hot, so we cut the end of people's dicks off in that the That sounds yeah. like something somebody would say about Australians that you would get mad at. You're mm -hmm. like, I know why you're all circumcised, because yeah. goddamn kangaroos kicking dirt in your dicks. That's why. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's not far yeah. from the truth. I, I have to say, though, I know you mentioned this the other day, so I just had a daughter. 
a few weeks oh, yeah. ago. And Did I, you get it circumcised? Uh, well, <laughs> 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 but I was so – one of the things – I mean, we're, of course, we're excited, but one of the things I was like, oh, no, breasts. That's going to be great. I don't have oh, to yeah. hold the baby while they – They cry. I was, a piece of their body I was there when yeah. my, my son was circumcised, and it was stressful. Yeah. But I don't I, think I would have handled it. He was though. crying before it anyway. It was just like more pain added the, to the Yeah, crime. but do you have to like be there and then like be proud of it? I don't know. I mean, the what, was, was, and what, the, do, you, what do you do with the foreskin? I, um, I'm going to wait till I have six kids and have some calamari. <laughs> <laughs> You should oh make a charm bracelet. I'm, 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 circum- <laughs> <laughs> I'm using it as a thimble. I'm circumcised too. I just I don't know where my foreskin is. So. Um, no one's kept it. I don't know. If anyone out there has foreskin, <laughs> misconnection. Yeah. You foreskin. Yeah. Me, M me. seeking F. Where are you? Man seeking foreskin. Do you think they keep it for us? Um, I don't know. I, I imagine some mothers keep it. I, I don't know. No, they don't. It's only very small. You frame it. No, it'll you know? sh- it shrivels. <laughs> you bronze it. Like it shrivels shoes. up and dies. It's dead skin. It doesn't like exist forever. Yeah, You'd have know. to put it in alcohol. Yeah, you know, preserve it, put in some formaldehyde. One day your foreskin is going to come knocking at your door. It's all grown up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a job. Your father never knew. He's had more sex than Jack. I think all I right. know the third <laughs> season of This Is Us. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about that, and then we talked about fraternities and fraternities and the drinking. The and drinking the, age was the big and, thing. And, yeah. and drinking age, because me as an Australian who's been drinking since I was probably 14, the legal age is 18, I was getting into nightclubs um, illegally at 16, and look at how great I turned out. Um, and I, I always thought the whole 21 age was stupid. Now, my nephew, my nephew is 18. He works in a bar, and he said to me, he goes, oh, I might come out and visit for a couple of weeks. And I went, you can't drink here. And he's like, oh, wait a couple of years probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, he needs to wait three, but he's done. That was crazy, the list of countries that you guys that put That was really amazing to me, actually. Yeah, yeah. Micronesia. Mongolia. Mongolia. Palau. Sri Lanka. That's all I remember. And then the, maybe... Some of the word C. What? Oh, Cote d'Ivoire. Co- yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. The Ivory Coast. So all countries that you associate with the United States. I would, I, very I, tiny, like I, all small, these sort of island South Pacific countries. And, and I Africa, think there's yeah. countries that the drinking age is 16. I think. Maybe. I don't know. I, we didn't check that, but I think there are younger countries. When, when I was really little, I went to Germany. It was the last time I saw my dad, everybody. Uh, but I was... Uh, was it on a train? <laughs> <laughs> but I was, That's really sad, uh, Forrest. I, I was, uh, was that the last time you saw your yeah, dad? Yeah, I was 12. That was the last time I saw him. Yeah. Where does he live now? Uh, I don't know, Alabama or something like that. Oh, and you yeah. saw him in Germany? Why did you see him in Germany? Because I was turning 12, and I was like still trying to have some sort of relationship with my dad, so I had to fly all the way to Germany to do it. But he, why was he, he made in... a lot of effort. So I'm why, trying to say why, <laughs> why, why was he in Christ. Germany? He's in the military. He was stationed there in Kaiserslautern. I actually knew all this, but I just wanted to get that information out. Yeah, and so I remember going out to, to dinner one night, and I got to have a sip of wine. It wasn't like have a whole bunch, but they like, you know, like you're saying, they get kids. You, yeah, you dip your sausage yeah. in it, yeah. eat some sauerkraut, sip but, of wine. <laughs> But at the time, I wasn't allowed to go into an arcade and play video games. Like that we was can a, drink wine. Yeah, because when you're told, they're like, "We don't want your brain being absorbed by this," you know, <laughs> uh, exposed to this. But it's yeah. funny. I had the strictest upbringing you can imagine. My parents were like, if I came home late, or I was grounded, I was in trouble constantly, and I wasn't that bad a kid. But for whatever reason, my mother let it slide whenever I was drunk when I was 15. She didn't give a fuck. Oh, really? She didn't care. I was always drinking with my brothers as well. We used to sit under the Harbour Bridge in Sydney and just get a case of beer and just sit there and drink like trolls under a bridge. <laughs> but a beautiful view, and the cops never came tossing around there. Cans. So we just, yeah, just tossing cans into the harbour. I drank, what, did you, what, what age is your first drink? Uh, sometime in high school. I don't but know, before like, 18, yeah. Yeah, I, was, yeah, yeah. I don't know, 16, something like that. Yeah, 16. Yeah, to a high school party. Jack, yeah. have you had a drink yet? Yes. How old, <laughs> how old are you? I've given you a drink. I was 21 and a half. You waited. You're the person. Yeah, I'm the one person. You, no, why no, no. did you, why did you wait? Until so after he was 21, he didn't even have it when he turned 21. <laughs> why? Fun of me on my birthday. Why did you, Why did you wait so long? Um, it was weird. I just um, it, alcohol just didn't interest me. Okay, but how do you know? You never tried it. I just saw other people getting drunk, and I saw my parents have a little bit when I was growing up, and I just it just didn't. In school, honestly, school scared me a little bit. All this stuff that just is like you're gonna drive and you're gonna die and. But your father is an executive at Coca-Cola. Do you know how well that mixes with Jack Daniels? <laughs> no. It's like the two of them should anything. be fucking each other. It's a marriage made in heaven, Jack and Coke. Uh, Try it. That's why his name is Jack. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe. Nope. Uh, 
Seems yeah, obvious. is your Man. sister called Coke? <laughs> no, she's called Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a sister? No, a brother. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. What's his name? Sean. Mm, that doesn't work out. Yeah, Jack joke. and yeah. Sean. That sounds yeah. like a shit radio Sean show. Sean and right Coke. There. Sean and Coke's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so we <laughs> talked about the legal drinking age and it, all the problems it, it, that people it, have it, drinking for us. Before something. we go on, like the, on the, I'm just looking at the sheet here. Penn State, Tim Piazza died. Estimated to have a 0. .40 blood alcohol level. I can't even. But he also won crazy. the Cy Young three times. That's, that sounds like a baseball <laughs> no, player. No, no, that's uh, no, legal Mike, limit. Mike, Mike Piazza was a catcher oh, for the Dodgers. Oh, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, legal is 0. .08, I believe. You can't I think drive. That's right, yeah. 0. .08, and this is 0. .4. Do you think you've ever had a 0. .4? I don't think. I've I've been really drunk, but 0. .4. I feel we're like being that's really drunk. I've you, definitely yeah. done a three. I've definitely yeah. done. A this three. is just like guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Did you ever? I had a friend. This was in college, but I don't even know where it came from. But he had a breathalyzer. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, the game is to see how high you can blow yeah, yeah. a of breathalyzer course, before course, you're course. dead. But, so, yeah. but everyone has, like, a friend that, like, you know, everyone handles alcohol differently. And there was, like, friends that I would always have that would just completely black out but still be, you know, you wouldn't even know it. They'd just be like, yeah, I'm socializing. And then the next day I don't remember anything. That's, I, that's me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, you're a blackout drunk. Well, but, I mean, not to the point. Like, I've never done anything crazy or hurt myself or, like, you know, but I'll forget. Yeah, I forget. Big this. chunks of the night. Not so much anymore, but I oh, used wow. to. I had to slow it down a little bit. You have a baby. You know that, right? Yeah, well, yeah. That's okay. why I had to okay. slow it down. Oh. <laughs> so it's, Me and Hank's yeah. mother used to drink in front of him constantly. <laughs> well, it's okay to drink in front of <laughs> yeah. him stuff, but, but I don't know. I oh, think... yeah. No, we went back to cocktails in the house immediately. Yeah, that's what I, I – yeah. when I had a baby, I stopped going out to drink and just got fucked up at home. Right. And I never used yeah. to get fucked up at home before I had a kid. I never even had alcohol in the house. Oh, see, we would have drinks in the house all the time, and then you know my wife couldn't really enjoy them in the same way for a long. Did she time have any? Did she did she drink it all while she was pregnant? A little bit. Yeah, I think a little bit's all right. You know, not get much. fucked up. You a glass yeah. of wine here, whatever. Yeah, like you we went fun. on vacation and she had a glass of wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't. You know, was I fun. remember like people being so judgmental when um, Kate was pregnant with Hank that people would just like slap the crack pipe out of her hand. <laughs> I, re- I, that is I remember being so angry. Like these people are so judgy. Right. Do you th- so your case you on think, crack, by the way. Do you so. think that uh, if the drinking age was eighteen, that you think there'd be less deaths? No, I think I think there'd be definitely less deaths in fraternities because uh, you wouldn't be drinking in houses. You'd go out to bars, and bars you don't die in yeah. bars. You don't die yeah, in you'd, bars. So you'd get help. Bars don't you, give yeah. you beer, tube, funnel, thingy, majiggies, and, you know, you don't play drinking games in bars for the most part. Yeah. And bars kick you out when you're too fucked up. Yeah, and you have to pay for it. Um, yeah, there's that as well. But uh, What do you know, Jack? You don't even yeah, drink. you never even bought a drink, Jack. Have you, ever, <laughs> have you ever paid for a drink? Yeah. When? Mm, a couple days ago. Actually, last night. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For yourself or for yeah. someone else? At Flappers? Yeah. What's your drink uh. of choice? I am a big fan of the screwdriver. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> That's such a, I don't, I just started uh, drinking drink right there. Like, <laughs> I did start drinking. I, I, love, mm. I love the screwdriver. Sex because, out of beach. It's, 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 the, it's the most Grass simple supper, drink yeah. that's officially a cocktail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything else is a vodka and coke, a Jack and Coke, yeah. and then a vodka and orange is a, a screwdriver. Yeah. 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 What's in a grasshopper? I forget. It's like... It's- Creme de menthe and uh, I don't yeah, know what yeah, else. Creme de like, menthe. Creme de like menthe and a yeah. thing. And I, went to, I went to bartending school for two weeks Ooh. where they teach all the cocktails so you can get a job in a bar. Yeah. And it was just me and ugly guys. For some reason, good-looking girls still got jobs in bars without doing the course. I don't know how it happened. Huh. Um, but you'd have to mix cocktails and stuff like that and learn how to pour a beer. It was very exciting times. I'm boring everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys know who the information czar is? Oh, right. that would be me. All right. Um, <laughs> no. uh, Who it, would I ask if I wanted that information? Me, I've got it right here. Oh. It's Kundra Vivek. Oh, Kundra. oh wait, no, 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 that, so no, that's the old one. It's Is Vi- Kundra a it's, boy or a girl? No, no. <laughs> Let's debate this right now. You meet someone. I uh, want you to meet my friend Kundra, boy or a girl. I know what the I'm answer gonna say, is. I'm going to say female. It's a it's a guy. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, he was the original information czar, and now this name is just as crazy. This is the current information czar, Van Rockle. 
Steven. Uh, Van Rockle Steven. Oh, wait, is Steven his first Van name? Rockle. Oh, yeah, Steven Ren Rockle. I'm sorry. They had the names, back. <laughs> they had the know, names backwards in the show. You know when he was a kid and he went into a shop and there was all those personalized mugs? Yeah. Right. How hard was his life? Uh, <laughs> no, but you got any Van Rockle? I, I wanna, any Van I, Rockle mugs? I want to make this point clear. Kundra was the last name. I said, But still, the first name is Vivek, so I don't know if you're going to... But I would have said male then. if, it, if Vivek? Yeah. yeah. Vivek. Vivek. I know that, yeah. Vivek. 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 Vivek is a male yeah. name? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Vivek aren't making you a little license plate for your car Vivek. with Vivek on it. I, they never had Forrest. You probably had yours, Jason. No problem. Oh, yeah. I Mugs, mean, I'm, my, my name was super popular. I've was always fun. thought with your name, Forrest, you had a good life and then that movie came out and then you just oh. went, fuck. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, because yeah. people, I, I, I hang out with you and I introduce you to people, and they still go run, forest, run. Yeah, and it's like, uh, yeah. it's like, and it's like, and I like the name. I, mean, I love the name. So forest. thirty years, twenty years, twenty years. It was 20 years. 1990, It was like twenty-five years. That twenty-five reason? years, yeah. and people still say that to you, and we all can see that you can't run. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it's so insulting. Some, sometimes people say that, and then they they ask and sincerely ask. They're like, "Yeah, you've heard that before, right?" Like, yeah, of course, I've heard that before. Like, it's been twenty, yeah. whatever. It's like, you know, what you should do. Yeah. You should like when you meet a Steven. Yeah. You should go, oh, Steven, you suck dicks, right? Suck uh, dicks, suck dicks. <laughs> Steven, you suck dicks. And then they look at you and go, you haven't seen that movie? Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Oh, it's a very popular film. <laughs> <laughs> you've never heard that before? It's big in Belgium. Maybe you've seen, haven't seen it. It's called The Information. So that was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was drinking. We all enjoyed drinking. Then we had an interview. Yes. Um, I've got to find his name. Tom, Tom Nichols. Nichols. Tom Nichols. Tom Nichols was uh, very I can nice give you some background on real quick. The interview was my favorite part of the episode. I thought it was great. I thought it was good. He's, I didn't he's, have to read. he's the author of The Death of Expertise, and he was also the conservative leader of the Never Trump movement. He's a professor of security affairs at the U.S. Naval War College. He's got a, and he's a five-time winner of Jeopardy. Yes, only because they cut you off at five. Yeah, he could have kept going. You, you could know? tell when you met him, you're like, this guy, yeah, that makes sense. That yeah, checks that's, out. Like, that's <laughs> why if you watch the interview, I just do dumb the whole time. Like every other time when I talk about healthcare or something or talk to the uh, insane clown posse, I've tried to say on the same intellectual level. Mm. And then with this guy, I was like, nah, don't even try. This guy's definitely <laughs> smart. He's definitely smarter than you. He was good. <laughs> He was funny too, I thought. Yeah, he was and funny. he talked about the Dunning Kruger effect, which I think is really interesting because I, we've talked about this before. That the dumber you are, the more confident that you are that you're not dumb. Right. And that is like, and it's I guess it's just exacerbated now with the internet and stuff and being able to look up things and, that and was think my you favorite, know stuff. You know? My favorite answer in the whole interview was me going, "I don't know about that." But you, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You used to have a joke though back in the day. Remember, it was like about America being. Sorry, my, America was like number one in number one um, in confidence, but number twenty in education. Yeah, yeah. So you're producing um, confident, stupid people. The but worst Japan. human beings. Yeah. Ever. But Japan's like number one in education. Number one in education, number thirty in confidence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why they're, that's yeah. why they're crushing it. <laughs> yeah, but they'd always that was something. Well, that, like, and that's imposter syndrome. I don't know if there's a more technical name, but like when you. Are doing it when you are smart and you think you're not. Oh, good I have mm. imposter syndrome on my career badly, yeah. man. I expect every day for there to be a phone call going. Yeah, it turns out you're not funny. I uh, think a lot of, I think I a lot think, of legitimately talented show business people do. I, I think th I think it's very goes, common. Uh, there's one of two kinds of people in show business. It's either the Dunning Kruger people or the imposter syndrome. Um, yeah. I hear Pierce Morgan, uh, not Pierce Morgan. He probably doesn't have that, but <laughs> Pierce Bronson. Really. James so, Bond. Yeah, so Pierce, if you're listening, mate, you have done too well. You're not that good looking. <laughs> uh, you're not I'll, that great an actor. Your life Thomas is Crown a lie. Yeah. <laughs> you do not deserve it, Pierce. Re Remington Steele. Uh, I forgot it. He's had a long career, huh? He's had a great career for an artist. He's Irish James room. Bond already. I mean, if you're James Bond, you're art, except, you know. Your buddy Lazenby only did one. But. Lazenby did one. Um, I feel like, okay, they're either going to go for, who's the guy, um, Al, uh, the black guy? Um, Idris Elba. He's going to be the next Elba. James oh, Bond. Yeah. That's what I've heard. He's going to be the next James Bond. Wait, was, uh, have you told the story on the podcast? Was Lazenby the, um, is that some kind of cheese guy? <laughs> oh, Lazenby, George Lazenby. I was thinking about I've that told today. This, <laughs> I've, told this, I've told this on other podcasts, but George Lazenby, when I did my sitcom Legit, uh, played my father. And uh, literally what happened was... He was I, one, James Bond one time. He was James Bond yeah. one time. And literally I wanted, I wanted Paul Hogan <laughs> to play my dad. But Paul Hogan was busy, you yeah. know, Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. And so then the casting people came back to me and said, how about James Bond? And I said, all right. 
right? Now, we got an actress uh, from Australia who I love called Magda Sabansky to play my mother, who's, who's an overlate. Overweight woman. I don't think I'm being mean in saying she that. was the, the the wife and babe. The wife and babe. But she's done a lot of other stuff. But yeah, if you're she's American, got, she's you're massive good. in right. Australia. But she was yeah. the wife and babe was the big thing, and um, and so so my mother got very upset that my dad was going to be portrayed by um, James Bond. Yeah. And my dad was going around to his bowling club going, I'm being played by James Bond. James <laughs> Bond. I'm going to be James Bond. Anyway, so we got all excited to meet George Lazenby. And what happened was there's actually a documentary on, um, I'm going to say, what's not Netflix, the other one? Hulu. 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 About being Bond. And it's all about him. And I'm in the documentary talking about him on Conan. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and it's, it's all about this guy that did one James Bond movie. And the first time I met Lazenby, we were doing a, a scene where we were laying on beach towels on some sand. And I was laying next to him. He's probably 75 years old. And I thought... I don't want to be disrespectful, but I need to know the answer to this question. And I said, George, did you have you ever fucked a Bond girl? And he replied with, it'd be easy to tell you which ones I haven't fucked. They all come to the conventions. So, <laughs> so George has been through a few Bond girls, but not in their prime. Not in their prime. <laughs> he's, he's, he's done it in a Motel 6 with a whole lot of headshots of himself on the side table. And so anyway, so... <laughs> So the other dad in the piece was um, uh, John Ratzenberg, who will be known as Cliff Clavin from Cheers. Yeah. Um, pig can, and Toy Story. Yeah, the Pig and Toy Story. Now, uh, he's a Republican, um, a, a conspiracy theorist, and a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, look, Not I, necessarily in that order. No, if he's listening, man, I don't have a bad word to say about the guy. His thoughts are completely different from my thoughts, but, man, yeah. if I want to have a beer with someone for a fucking hour, man, John yeah. Ratzenberg's my boy, man. Yeah. He's in, and he's just like, we once walked into a bar. Was, was it you? Yeah, in Kansas City. In Kansas City. Me, Forrest, and John Ratzenberg walked into a bar that could be described as an... Just urban, to give you pre just to preface it, we, he were wanted you to shooting he, there. No, he, he, he I was doing a gig. He was, he was just in town doing a Comic Con. He was a Comic Con. He's been so in he every. He's been in every Pixar movie, and he also was in Star uh, Empire Strikes Back, and yeah. he's in all. So he does Comic Cons, and we went to a we went to a barbecue place. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, that's a famous barbecue place in Kansas City. Salt and pepper on chains. Yeah, in case you stole them. Yeah. This is the place we we're in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like late at night, and it was just we we took a cab. We were in a neighborhood that was. That was a neighborhood where when we tried to get a cab back, they wouldn't come get us. Right. <laughs> Just to give you, that's a real, like we were trying to get a cab and like, we're not coming there to pick you up. And the owner of the barbecue place ended up giving us a ride uh -oh. back. But th it was attached to a bar that used to be me a Mexican restaurant because it was Mexican themed. But we were the only three white people in there. And so it was me, Forrest, and John Ratzenberg yeah. walked in, and it was uh, older black people in, in the bar, and they yeah. were listening to, like, 70s, like, soul music type of yeah. thing. And as soon as we walked in, uh, we were noticeably... If the needle could have went... We were in the wrong... I never felt this yeah. in a bar in my whole life to this extent. Everyone just turned and looked at us, and we just went... <sighs> yeah. And then we went up to the bar, and I said to John, I said, we should get going. We shouldn't be here. And John went... Yeah, just uh, wait a minute there, Jimmy. Yeah, just wait a second there. And everyone's ignoring us. And then the bartender came up and they gave us beers, but she put the napkin in the top of the beers. I've never seen that either. Yeah, that and then weird. lit it on fire. And <laughs> it was filled with alcohol. Yeah. And then everyone's still staring at us. Like one person actually asked me like what I was doing there or what I wanted. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm just having a beer. Like it was a very weird situation. And then John's just like, yeah, just give it a minute. Yeah, just give it a minute. And I'm like, John, we have to go. And then someone at the end of the bar went, oh, my God, it's Norm. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> and, got then, it wrong. and then he went, eh, close enough. That's right? Great. And then within five minutes, we were arm in arm all singing the theme song to Cheers. Yeah, we sang the theme song. <laughs> and then there was a line to take pictures of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If like... you ever walk into a bar with Cliff Clave and you are going to have a good fucking time yeah. and you will not pay for drinks. And then, yeah. You will not. It was Gates Barbecue, I just remember it. And then the owner, who was the grandson of the original Gates, gave us a ride home because we were like, because the lady, I remember at the restaurant, I was like, hey, we need to get a cab. And she goes, okay, we'll see if that works. And she was like, <laughs> made a phone call. She was like there's no cabs coming. That's so, funny. yeah. But he's a fun guy. And I'll give John credit because, as I said, he's a staunch Republican. Um, me and him have very different views on the world. 
But after, I think, episode three, he texts me for the first time in about a year to say how much he was enjoying the show and right. how he felt like it was a well-measured show that we put on. Yeah, that's nice. But you still didn't tell the story. The Jason story. said that's that he likes the, the George Lazenby cheese. On the cheese. Oh, okay, so you write scripts. You put the description <laughs> in. Go way script. off track. Yeah. Like, and there was, there was a scene that was actually based on a real-life thing about my mother. Um, she, whenever she goes on holiday, she gets sick. So she goes to another country and she always spends time in the hospital. She gets deep vein thrombosis, which is the disease you get, the, disease, the condition you get um, from sitting still for too long and you, you get blood clots in your, in your legs. Anyway, so in the episode, my mum and dad are coming to visit me. And this is, this is my dad in real life. Uh, my, mother, my mother complains about illness and then my dad ignores it because it's just an everyday occurrence. And so uh, Magda comes in playing my mum. And she goes, I have to be rushed to hospital. I have blood clots in my legs. And then George was meant to walk to the fridge, open the fridge, act like he was ignoring it, pull out a plate that had cheese on it and say the line, is this some type of cheese? Like just a throwaway line. Yeah, yeah. Right? But he didn't read the directions. <laughs> he only read his line. So she went, I've got blood clots in my, blood clots in my legs. And then George just stood in the middle of the room going, is this some type of cheese? <laughs> I was just thinking about that. I think about that all the time. Actually, and this is the thing: is, that line. This was the first time he had done an acting role where there was a digital film, uh -huh. like not digital. It wasn't film, and so he thought acting was only ever done with like two takes because yeah. because film was expensive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we're burning. He was uh, like, we're burning film here. He was like. He nailed, I nailed it. It was just some type of cheese. Next one. Give it to me. Um, and then we closed up the show with my one of my best friends in the whole wide world. Known this guy for over 17 years. Over 17 years. 17 years. Not over. Um, this guy makes me laugh. Makes, back, says. makes me laugh more than any other human on earth. Um, He's uh, the comedy czar. Reese Darby. Reese Darby, <laughs> yes. who many of you will know from Flight of the Concords, who played Murray. Um, he's in the new TV show Wrecked on TBS, which don't watch that. It's on the same time as us. Um, short Poppies. He had a whole series. Short Poppies. Really he made his own series called Netflix. Short Poppies. He is uh, just a ball of funny. He's like in the same way that uh, Chris Farley was just funny. Reese Darby is just funny. If you spend any time with him, he's it, just hysterically funny. He's automatically funny. I remember last night you told me like what was going on with the act, and you were just telling me the line. You were just saying him like without anything, and I was just picturing Reese doing it, and I was already yeah. laughing because I knew it was going to be that funny. Reese yeah. was in legit for a couple of episodes. Um, he's on this show. I, I, actually, I had a bad read today during the show. I was very embarrassed because Reese was there because I admire Reese so much. I didn't want to fuck up in front of Reese, so that was sad. Um, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be okay, <laughs> but I did it. Came out probably good. The, 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 the piece you did with him, that, that was, was back and forth. Now the was piece, really the piece we did yeah. together was a whole piece on how whenever you watch American sports in Australia, Britain, anywhere else besides America, they don't give you the commentary from their it evidently costs more or something. Or they'll give you the commentary, but they won't give you the halftime report. They'll just give you like guys like if you're watching baseball. They'll give you like the cricket commentators. Yeah. Like, here you go. These guys are going to uh, talk okay, about right, sports. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I thought it'd be funny to do a bit um, where Reese was talking about the, the World Series and him being baffled by the fact that no one else in the world is involved. Right. And Reese was funny as he always. He was very funny. He, yeah. he came in, and the one request he had is I have to wear headphones. Yeah. <laughs> headphones will make me funnier. And those headphones those were some were, pretty funny headphones. <laughs> were, and during the run through, uh, uh, in the like the stand in was what Matt uh, Kirshen was doing the stand in, but I don't think he had the antenna all pulled all the way up. And no, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. I think that's how good Reese is. Like, oh, the antenna all the way up. Oh, I know how to make this funny. <laughs> and he pulled it all the way. Yeah, the headphones are great. But those headphones great. also. Now like, we no have they double. We have to wrap this. Head. We have to <laughs> wrap this podcast up because Tommy Caprio. Aww. Who we tease sometimes in the episode because he always tries to. He just did a to, creepy thing. He wants to window. deny that he wants to be famous, but he always puts photos of himself on Instagram yeah. on the show. Uh, we are going to the World Series right now. Tommy is driving us, and he's thinking that we're taking too long on the podcast. So, anyone got any uh, dates they want to add? Um, well, yeah, anything uh, 
Jason, you want to say? No, like I don't a do anything. Twitter handle or anything you want to promote? Show. You sure you can follow me on Twitter if yeah. you want? It's <laughs> wow, Jason, that's really Jason M. It. Jason M. Reich. Maybe I'll tweet. You got to spell it. J a s o n m r e i c h. All right, really exciting. Jack, you doing anything? Nah. Great. Uh, Good night, everyone. I would like to plug Jack's career. Oh, I need to plug one thing. You start walking away. I'm going to be at Side Bye, Splitters Jim. Comedy Club this weekend. This weekend when you're listening to it. So come out. It's in Tampa. If you live in Tampa, I know we have listeners I've seen on there. Please come out so I can have some sort of career in stand-up. <laughs> and uh, please subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you listen.